getting that information. Okay, here we go. All right, you've opened it. Now, the first thing you're going to determine is what your role as a Zonta leader, as you read that, of course, you've already done that because that was the first step. As you read it, it will say, how will you as a, and it'll define your role. As you read your scenario, you'll know who you will be training. As you look at that, you'll find, you'll determine what's the context of your training. So you could be a president, a committee chair, a seasoned Zanchen, it will tell you in your, in your scenario there as you read it. So the first thing you're going to do, step one, you're going to identify what Zanchens you'll be training, why you're, why you're training them specifically. What do you know about them? How much do you understand of their Zanta knowledge base or where are the gaps in their knowledge? What is their Zanta experience? Then you're going to determine their needs. What does your audience need to know? What do they already know? How do they feel about their training? Can they even spell Zanta? You know, we, you, gotta, you gotta get down to it here and find out what you're dealing with. Do they want to be trained? It may, they may think they're doing everything perfectly well. Does your scenario even think they need to be trained? Well, as you move through that, we need to assess their learner's needs. You can do that very simply with a, a simple questionnaire or phone calls. You can do a formal survey. You can, it can be paper or pencil. It can be electronic with SurveyMonkey. We all know that monkey, don't we? There are informal needs assessments simply based on your previous experience as a, as a seasoned Zanchen, perhaps. What you've seen them do or not do, what's been demonstrated in action. And just the wisdom of the group, the folks say, hey, we need help. Okay, so on and so forth. So you have an activity. You have that white worksheet. Work as a group at your table. Be sure you understand what your scenario is and your role, and then complete steps one and two. You have 10 minutes. Hello, if you could raise your hand, it looks like we are uh, going out to a breakout room. And it looks like they may be having a problem sending us to the breakout room. If you just hang on for a few minutes. We're all going to join breakout rooms now. And if you are not put into a breakout room, please go into the chat box and let them know that you have not been assigned to a breakout room.
Where am I supposed to be? So who's not in a breakout room? <laughs> Did we start talking now? <laughs> I was in one and I got kicked out. So I, I'm Angela. And so I don't know. We got as far as number oh. one. <laughs> okay. It looks like they're, they've got somebody now. Okay. Gina, are you in this one with Pam? No idea. Oh, goodness. I hear somebody. This is Pam. This is Angela, and I, I unmuted because I I just see five. I don't see anything else. I don't know what's going on with my screen. So right. Right. Maybe maybe Angela, you and I are in the same one because I am hearing you. Okay, so do you are you in um, scenario five with the as the stick? No. No, oh. I'm in, I, I have four, at least that's what they sent me in the mail. Okay, you know, I, in, in my email, I was five. <laughs> okay, so then we're not, then we're not in the right ones yet, yeah. eh? I, I, I don't think so, but have you, I'll just challenge you, have you identified your audience based on things that you were reading? We'll make our own. <laughs> okay. Well, mine was the nominating committee, so mine would be the, the three or how many members any club decides to uh, put on their nominating committee. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. And what do I know about them or is how many years they've been in Santa probably and what they know of, of the members in our club. <laughs> what was yours, Angela? Uh, my role what? was just district lieutenant governor and, and our training was on pre for the pres club presidents and board members. And so um, oh, we just oh. leadership roles, uh, comfort level with technology years in, in Zonta, like you said as well, but we didn't get as far as the determine the needs. Um, well, so. I guess, yeah, I guess skills, right? What their skills are. I yes. Mean, and I, our club is a diverse group. And so we always, try to make sure when we put a committee together that we have some diversity on it or we look for them to look for diversity in what they're putting together as a committee, you know, as, or as uh, a board. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but that's one of the things we always make sure that we have a diverse, you know, we're looking for a diverse board, we're looking for a diverse committee, we're looking for diverse members to be put on the board. Our, um, our well, our mine, mine, my club myself is not as diverse. We need to expand on that. But like with my scenario, we lost five members in the club in the last year. They didn't renew for their coming year. So that was our scenario for number five. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that sounds like our club, to be honest with you. Yeah. So what do you? So you have to probably. I'm thinking retention, right? I mean, you got to look at getting people involved, maybe. That's the other thing. And even for a nominating committee, you want people to get other people, newer people involved in, in something right away, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I wrote down that, that involvement engagement, just that they, yeah. they have that buy-in and they want to learn and they feel welcomed and included. Right. Um, because I think, one of the reasons we lost one of our members was uh, we didn't get her we didn't get her hooked on something you know and with virtual meetings it didn't help either but whatever um, yeah. um, we didn't have any new members this year so 
yeah, we were we were lucky to get two virtually, which I I mean with the just virtual meetings, which I thought was really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sure from our standpoint on, on the nominating committee, people don't think they need any any uh, any training. They just think, oh yeah, I can do this. I can do this, you know. But yet, I think the other thing we don't have really is responsibilities written out as good as you know. Oh, I got it. I got a join now from somebody else. Angela, did you? I have not yet, but that's okay. You do your thing and I've got, I wrote down those, those notes. So I think that's a good thing. So go ahead. <laughs> Hello ladies, it's Lori Robinson. I'm helping with the Zoom. Do we have a session leader here? Well, oh. <laughs> I was in one and I and it ended and I didn't get back in that one. And so the a lady, I forgot her name now, she and I were talking. She's in the nominating, her scenario was nominating and mine was um, with losing membership as Lieutenant Governor. So we were talking about two different things because we didn't have anybody else. Okay, um, hi Marnie, how are you? Judy, Judy Couts, are you there? So who is here with you, Angela? Um, I did not I write. Did write. <laughs> so I didn't write down the lady's name. And I don't know if she's here anymore. I think she went to a different meeting or she, okay, got, she so got invited in something different. Okay, so what I'll need to do is I need to get a hold of someone to invite you to another meeting room so that you can get in there. And what scenario did you have? Five. Five, Five? okay. And your last name, Angela? It's McDowell. Yeah. MCD. Uh huh. O W E L L. And I did take some notes from what I taught when I talked to the other lady. So at least I have something written down. <laughs> okay. And, and um, you were supposed to be in what group? It's scenario five, but I was assigned to room three initially and then it, and it ended. And there was only, there was one other lady in that one. Okay. And then it was in front. And you're in Illinois? Yes. Yes. I have a uh, family from Rockford, Sycamore, DeKalb. Oh my gosh, I have a friend from college that lived in, uh, in Sycamore. Now she's outside of, I believe it's Rockford now. Where are you? I'm um, outside of Toronto, Ontario. Oh, wow, okay. I can't seem to arouse anyone there. Well, I, I did write down some notes from when we were talking. So I've got some things to that I can relay.
Oh, it looks like they're bringing the group back, Angela. So I'm going to okay. go on to you. Okay. Good morning. And if you're still, if you're just joining our Zoom group, we're just coming back from our first session breakout uh, in our in our rooms. So please be patient while we all get out of our rooms and come back to the main meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we need to hear from, thank you, that's good. We need to hear from a pink scenario. Don't pretend like there's no pink out there, I saw it. It's okay, don't fight over the mic, it's all right, we have two. All right, don't read your scenario to us, just tell us who your, who your star is, who you're working with, okay? Who, I'm working with the nominating committee. The nominating committee, Sue yes. and the nominating committee, my, my. Sue. Uh-huh. Do you want me to? Okay, so I'm Melanie from Billings. So, um, Santa Club of Billings. Come to our, uh, we're doing the missing and murdered indigenous persons presentation. So, um, yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, we're training the nominating committee. We want to train them about the roles and responsibilities and how to effectively ask someone to step up into a leadership role. And we want to train them how to start passing the torch so that we can start a little bit of a mentorship program going into in our club. Um, we feel that they're a little bit uninformed. They're not communicating with one another and they don't understand the specific roles of being in a leadership position, because all they want to do is just go out and say, um, can you be, you know, vice president and hopefully get a yes. Um, they maybe don't have a lot of experience about Zonta, or they don't know a lot about the leadership roles that they're trying to fill. And um, we're going to try to train them so that hopefully the nominating committee can pick up some speed and they can help the next nominating committee to do the same. And um, they might be reluctant to learn, but um, we, we want to remind them that they uh, want to serve enthusiastically. <laughs> and we're hoping that they'll be willing to learn and that they'll um, learn about the knowledge or learn knowledge about the roles in the club and gain some sort of mentorship. And what is your role? What role are you playing? What, what did it tell you? What did your scenario say? You are uh, a... We're, it, we are the... Or a seasoned Zanshin. You are, you are Zanshins yes. who have been around so, for a while and you recognize something's wrong. Is we're that observing it? that the nominate committee may okay. not be doing All as right. much as they could. Okay, well, you're not finished yet. You still got some work to do. Thank yes. you very much for sharing. All right. <clears throat> now we're stepping on thin ice here. We're going to try to hear from a virtual breakout room somewhere out there. Is Jane Newman with us? Yes, I'm Jane. with you. Our room All right, we're proud of you. Okay. Our room, our well, our room had five scenarios. All right. But I will tell you the one that I was assigned. I'm helping the club treasurer, uh -huh. and I'm the district treasurer. Okay. So first of all, I like to know if. Uh, they are comfortable in this position. Do they have some change in bookkeeping or are they overwhelmed? And then I would try and find someone in the club who was the previous treasurer and or could have been a treasurer because of their experience in their workplace, have them mentor them, share the load. And I would help them directly, virtually, uh, sharing, and do anything else I could. All right, thank you, Jane. But we're just really doing well, aren't we, to have somebody from far away to share with us today. All right, okay, you're into it now. You're into your story. <laughs> I don't know if you're in that land far away on a dark and stormy night or what, but Jackie McCarroll is gonna help straighten you out. Jackie, would you come please? 
Thank you, wonderful. How's the audio out there? We're working with three mics. This is really an extravaganza. What, what a privilege to uh, be pioneers in this uh, virtual event as well. So you have identified the basics of your scenario. We wanna take you through what is important to zero in on before we move forward in training, sharing information with our Zanta sisters. One of the first things we ought to be focusing on as those who are delivering the training should be about our purpose. This is what you have in mind. We need to get clear on that. Uh, by the way, I want to point out, I don't know that we announced it, the PowerPoint slides from all of the presentations and, and workshops this weekend will be available uh, at the end of our time here together. They'll be on the NAIDM website. Do I have that right? So these will all be available for you as well. If I'm the person who is wanting to help develop others' options, it could well be that my intention, what, I, what I'm interested in primarily is about informing, sharing information, updating on new policies or procedures, summarizing uh, the after effects of our recent Zanta event. It's about information. We want to encourage you to go beyond. While information sharing is ever so important, think about all the Zanta information you have available. Okay. What do we? What is? Do I have in mind in terms of taking it further? Is my intention? Is our intention? Is is my need? in helping you learn this information, really more about persuading. I want to inform you regarding the real advantages of a consent agenda at our meeting. You need to have that information. Yet oftentimes there's more than that because you're hesitant. Uh, I want to persuade you, to convince you of the value of relying on a consent agenda for the benefit of our meetings and the women who we, we serve. We can do this in a much more professional, efficient manner. There are other times, certainly, and you and I know that, who has ever had the experience of really trying to motivate someone? A couple heads, you know, whether it was in Zanta or elsewhere. I've been working on my husband for a long time on certain things. <laughs> it's not gonna happen magically. We need to be able to find that link. It's, I, I'm sharing information with you, yes, indeed. But what I really have is my intention in this training uh, is to motivate you, literally take action, for instance, that you make your plans to attend the International Convention in Hamburg in less than a year. So it's not just information, it's about action. Sign up, register, march uh, in the women's walk. So motivation is really about action. As you think about the scenario you have, and more importantly, the real life circumstances you're involved in, in your clubs, uh, I need to be attuned to What's the prize? What's the goal from, from my perspective? We need to go beyond that. What is it that is important in any training that we're anticipating, expecting, really working towards? How will learners, how will our fellow members or our district leaders, how are they gonna use this information? What are the desired behaviors? So I wanna motivate you to attend the ZI convention in Hamburg. The desired outcome is that you go forward and register, show up, buy your train ticket, <laughs> be there. Okay. 
In terms of objective, from the learner's perspective or desired results, we really want to be focused on behaviors. It's one thing to have information. How are they going to use this? Where will be the evidence? In Jackie's example, for instance, in working with the ZI board, she's helping them learn the significance, persuading them of how important it is that the behaviors, that uh, everything works well in terms of the board's presence at the convention. More importantly, she really worked to train them uh, to actually use the behaviors. So keep in mind, you know, what are the actions or useful skills? You're working with a new treasurer. The useful skills need to be apparent. They need to be visible. They need to be actionable. So purpose is my role. Desired outcome is for those lucky people on the receiving end. There are all kinds of ways to characterize objectives. Am I identifying, do I want the learners to compare last year's budget with this year's? That's very visible, that's actionable. Am I asking them to facilitate at a particular event? Those are behaviors one can witness. They're asking questions, they're engaging others. So knowledge is a great thing. We, in desired outcomes, wanna see some very concrete results. What behaviors are you looking to see? Knowing doesn't always translate to doing. We wanna help make that happen. What changes are we looking for? Here's Jackie's example, and she can give you lots of details in terms of how all that played out. Uh, much of the emphasis, I understand, had to do with nonverbal behavior. So training the board in terms of open postures, eye contact, vocal projection, those are very concrete results. Questions so far? Okay. Nah, that would be actionable. Okay. So based upon that little intro, you get to um, move further into your activity. And that would be step three. Your role here is to define your purpose. So as the trainer, what is your purpose? Inform, persuade, motivate. It could be any combination and you, you, we don't need to be just fixated on those words. Maybe it's convince, maybe it's update. Zero in on please document uh, what's your purpose and what are your desired results? In other words, what do you want your listeners, your audience, your fellow Zanchins to do as the result of the training? It's in your hands. For this portion, uh, you will have 15 minutes. There's more to address and we'll check back in with you. Thank you. Uh-oh. I got a picture up there. <laughs> One, if you just take another minute to finish your lively conversation, it'll be great to hear from you.
Yes, would you just take another minute uh, to finish your conversation and then we'll hear for some, from some different groups. Oh, it became very quiet, thank you. As all of us wandered around, we witnessed uh, lots of participation and interesting stories. So we're really eager to tap into that. What a wonderful opportunity at NAIDM to be able to build on uh, our successes, our efforts, and get to know so many other wonderful women. And those wonderful women with whom we want to share training are worthy of our doing some planning and preparing because so often it's not just about knowing the information. What really matters is being ready and able to use that information, to use the skills, the competencies in our efforts to work together towards our mission. So with your scenario, we asked you to consider who is your audience, what do you really want them to do as a result of the training? This is going beyond the what. It's leading to the why. Why are we providing it? What do we want or need to happen as a result? It's really much more focused and easier to measure, much uh, more likelihood of successful outcomes. Are the expected outcomes those that you can see, that are tangible, you can witness, they're behavior oriented. I know that you're very eager to share your worksheet progress. So I'm gonna call upon uh, those of you who have a lavender scenario, you know who you are. Uh, <laughs> Now I'm seeing somebody put those right back in the envelope. We, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can see a lot from up here. Someone with a lavender envelope, would you just give us a glimmer of your scenario and uh, please state your name, share with us the information you came up with. Thank you. I'm Anne-Marie Smith from Hudson, Ohio. Um, our scenario, we haven't heard from yet, um, our, our club, we're the club president, and um, we've had three young professionals join our club, and they're very interested in building their leadership skills by, um, and, and learning more about how Zonta works. And they've learned about the core competency program um, for leadership development on the ZI website, but there's some club resistance from the older, or the longer, more seasoned members to participate Aww. in this training. <laughs> I'm also a more seasoned member, so I put myself in that, in that category. Um, what do you want me to, do you want to talk about our step three? Yes. Okay. So um, our purpose plus result equals action. The behaviors we'd like to see is inclusion and a partnership between the new and more seasoned members. We'd like to see participation across club members, and we'd like to uh, create an openness toward the availability of the training. The changes we're looking for first is a renewed enthusiasm toward Zanta and the leadership opportunities it provides. And of course, we want a greater utilization of the core competency training program across our membership, not just for the new. Very members. well done. Give her a hand. And when you talk about renewed enthusiasm, is that something you can see? <laughs> There's behavior associated with it. And the more we become very, very specific, uh, really the optimal outcomes will take place. So thank you for that. I know that you're waiting in the wings, those of you who have a golden rod scenario. Well, it would be this color, dark yellow. Look how eager they are. <laughs> thank you for volunteering. My governor volunteered me, so thank you. 
it. <laughs> Enthusiastically, indeed. Um, I'm Lisa Burton. Um, I'm the District 3 Lieutenant Excuse Governor. me, could you step up closer to the mic? I think the mic has to. There. Is it on? Oh, well. Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm, I'm Lisa Burton. I'm the Lieutenant Governor for District 3. So our scenario, um, our role was Lieutenant Governor. I think I sat at the right table. Um, and and our, our scenario was basically a club president had five members leave. And um, so our behavior that we wanted to see was for the club president, the membership chairs um, and the board to have a better understanding of their um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats for the club. Um, to have a, an exit interview to understand why those five club members um, left and to really um, take, take a, an active role in understanding um, how their club was functioning. Um, the changes that we were looking for were again to have an exit interview to um, promote a greater understanding of how to grow the club, to develop um, relationships with Golden Z clubs and other like-minded organizations in their community and to um, yeah, develop understanding of relationship with their scholarship winners and their speakers um, that come to speak with their clubs and to keep their membership engaged. You came up with all kinds of uh, very helpful, wonderful ideas. Thank you so much. Now, and when we use that expression understanding, uh, we want to be able to translate that. Your examples went further you know, to be able to translate understanding. How will we witness that understanding? What would be the action results, the something more tangible that will tell us, yes, they've got it, they understand it. And certainly with exit interviews and relationships with Golden Z clubs, those are very visible action oriented. You could, you could measure that happening. So thank you. I, it was interesting, inadvertently, we, we had the opportunity to see some of our fellow Zanchins in the Zoom groups up here on the screen. So uh, I know that we're eager to hear from them. So Lori Robinson, uh, this is your lucky time here. <laughs> Out there in cyberspace, would you kindly share with us what your group? Um, actually, Jackie, I have not been in a group. I've been doing some technical troubleshooting. However, if you would like to flip to Elizabeth Spruill, I'm sure Elizabeth would be happy to tell you how the group is making out. Talk about volunteering enthusiastically. <laughs> it's our pleasure to hear from you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, yes, it's Elizabeth. Um, we had the uh, scenario two involving the treasurer. Um, what we our group felt was very important was that whoever stepped into this, as to say, quite suddenly, we do, don't have any understanding of their background, and there's probably a situation where they're feeling overwhelmed. So it's very important for them to feel supported, that they approach this in a calm manner. And we feel that organizing, you know, helping to organize the needs uh, and, and identify a timeline and set it out and reinforce the fact these are measurable, doable actions. So what we'd like to see in behaviors is an openness to learning um, and the signs that they're meeting some of the goals, uh, asking questions, um, you know, providing some of the information as we go along and what hopefully will occur, what changes that you'll start to see the things that need to be done, uh, the monthly statements, um, and that uh, sort of thing. So anyways, we feel it's it's a, one of those positions, not everybody might be comfortable for a treasurer and it has real implications. And so I think that uh, reinforcing that it is, they're just tasked to be done. And they're, as I say, they can be measurable and we would support them along the way doing that and openness, I think to being, learning these things is really the key behavior that will make it successful. Thank you so much. Let's give them a round of applause as well. 
you know, when you look at something, how many of you have ever been a treasurer of your club? Oh, look at that. We rotate through the responsibilities. <laughs> there was a time just humorously, Jackie and I are sidekicks and we, when you know Jackie Goodmanson, you end up, uh, you have the good fortune to share in lots of adventures. <laughs> and when there was some motivation for me to accept the role of club president some many years ago, she said, Jackie, if you do that, I'll be treasurer. So we were both putting our lives on the line with, with that one. And how much more valuable it is with the example we just heard, uh, the treasurer's responsibilities are very concrete. They are measurable. They are actionable. We want to be able to translate that thinking to other aspects of learning uh, so that the results are equally positive. So thank you for that. I think it'd be great to hear from one more virtual group. And who would you like to select here? Well, Pamela Morgans, if you're available, this is your lucky day. Queen for a day. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. What a pleasure to be here virtually and a pleasure to work with Group 9. Wonderful women and um, very motivated. So what behaviors do you want to see? This is our response. We want to see them complete the SWOT analysis which should bring out the fact that the clubs are boxed and then help them get the clubs out of the box. We want to determine how to identify each SWAT component. It can be done anonymously. And what we have found is that people will easily list strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Often you'll find that some items are listed in two categories excuse me, depending on the member and how long they've been in the meeting. For instance, the collegiality that some members find in dinner meetings can be a strength, whereas for younger, meeting, younger members who don't have the time to sit over dinner, that could be seen as a weakness. They want to see something that's more action-oriented that doesn't take up a lot of time. We feel also that we want to see good dialogue amongst everyone, and that will yield good results. We want strategies to help retain members and improve fellowship and collegiality. We need to see that they understand how to develop trust, which is critical, and it comes from being collegial and the feeling of cohesiveness. We think that every member should feel important to the organization, and we want to see a fresh focus. No assumptions regarding participation. Members need to feel productive, not in the rut of doing the same thing the same way all the time. And we want to see that they dare to explore different ways of doing things. And that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Very thoughtful, wonderful. I trust that hearing the scenarios, we can relate to those situations very easily and translate them to what's important in our own clubs and districts and areas in terms of helping fellow Zanchins, ourselves included, to really grow those skills. So thank you for the work that you've done here and the focus on the, the outcome, the desired results. Given that, we think that everyone's worthy of a break. <laughs> okay. We ask you please to uh, be back in 15 minutes if you choose to leave the room. And we look forward to uh, more excitement upon your return. Thank you.
Did it feel good to stand up and move around a little bit? I hope so. We're about halfway through this process. And so I think it's a good time to check with you. Do you have any questions or better yet, what are your questions? Could you, would you mind? Um, Nancy Dreyer, Sanibel Captiva, um, Lieutenant Governor, District 11. Um, you are going to, you did say you're gonna take the actual forms and then you're gonna, I just wanted to make sure. So that we, cause we went back, we have our neat Nick over here. Um, she rewrote it. So it's all oh nice. My. And neat. um, neatness doesn't count. Spelling isn't important in sharing these ideas because I'll type it up on the computer and it has spell check. So you don't have to worry about that. It's just, we want to capture your ideas and be able to share those designs with all of you because it always helps to have a little training program in your hip pocket in case there's a, a need. What other questions might you have? Please. Hi, good morning. Pat Latona, District 3 Governor. Um, I think uh, the genesis of all of this is motivation. How do you get people to actually act so and respond? So what are some of the key points related to motivating individuals as well as teams, such as your board, in order to move your club forward? Okay, excellent question. I know that we all wonder about how do I get this club to get going? What motivates us is what's important to us. And sometimes we have to go back to what is it about Zanta that keeps you coming and, and doing? What speaks to your passion? To me, when I joined, I thought, well, I can't do this. I don't have any time. I'm working full time. I have three kids <clears throat> and a husband, and they all take time. And I had fallen into the trap thinking that, well, I'm the mother and wife. I have to do everything. And thank God I joined Zanta because I found out I don't have to do everything. And Zanchins work to help other women, to empower them, to help them equally, to have equal pay, to have equal standing, to make their own decisions, to know what they are capable of. I'm so proud of that. And what motivates me is when there's a situation where I hear, and sometimes it's right in your own club, people who don't feel they can do what they'd like to do. Oh, my husband doesn't like it when I'm away at night. My husband loves it. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, I really always wanted to learn to swim, but, well, I'm 50 now. I couldn't do that. Whatever it is. Yes, we have much more status than many other women in the world, but we can address those needs in ourselves. Somebody told me that they'd been in Zanta for a very long time and they stayed a member, but they weren't really actively engaged until their club began to work with victims of trafficking. And that just re-energized them. So it's finding out what somebody's passion is. And with a board, what would you like 
the club to accomplish? What would make you feel happy and proud to be a member of this? What is it that's important to you? Is that at all helpful, Pat? Anna. Anna Sylvester, um, District 15. I have a statement and then a question. Sure. The statement is, we really are enjoying these scenarios. They are so relevant. So when you talked about relevance at the beginning, it is perfect. So my question, and you partly addressed it already, was uh, persuading uh, or motivating people to run for offices within the club. Because we all know when you ask somebody, they say yes enthusiastically, right? <laughs> Trust me, Jackie referenced the, the experience of treasurer. You have to understand I am not a numbers person. In fact, I'm probably numerically dyslexic. My husband said, well, don't worry about it. I'll help you. And, you know, obviously he isn't numerically dys dyslexic. <clears throat> so very first time for my report, I said, okay, I have to do this report and it has to show this and have to, has to show that. He looked at my computer and said, oh, I don't do Excel. Thank you so much. I would do these reports three times. And by the third time, we'd caught the numerical transitions where I transposed things. And that's why it didn't come out. But it always took three times, no matter how careful I was. He was good at proofreading. And he'd say, well, that's where the mistake happened. It was a wonderful learning experience and very humbling. And we didn't lose any money. I'm so relieved. How do we motivate people? One of the things we need to do, and I, I try not to be on a soapbox about this. We need to tell people there's help. First of all, you know, when all else fails, you can look in the club manual and it tells you stuff. And then the leadership development program worked on those six modules to help people feel comfortable with knowing what they needed to know to be able to serve. The core competencies go one step further. So when we ask somebody and they say, and women are so good at this, oh, I think you should ask somebody else. I don't think I'd be so good at this. Oh, contraire, we can help you. And we will support you. How many of you said yes when you really would have preferred to say no? Tell them why you ask them. You have such a caring personality. I know you would be wonderful as membership chairman. You make a point of getting to know our members. I'm impressed with your grasp of technology. We need to move forward in technology in our district. And I'd like you to be the district webmaster. And I'd like you to help us all learn how to meet electronically smoothly. Tap into what it is about them that is special because they have it. And it's not just, well, you're alive or, you know, you come. I mean, sometimes the way people ask, uh, you, you wouldn't want to be president, would you? Gosh, no. <laughs> what is it about that person? And by the way, Anna, thanks for the comment on the scenarios. Yvonne is scenario queen. <laughs> she has even more. So. <laughs> but we try to make this very practical for you. 
are there any questions virtually? Okay. So, any, what other questions? Any? You know, if it were easy, we'd have a lot of guys doing this. Shame on me. <laughs> Okay. But the question is, if you've expressed interest in doing more and wanting to grow at the district level, but seem to be overlooked in your district, what should you do or who should you talk to? Well, who have you expressed that to? Express it to everybody on the district board express it to people who are on the nominating committee and maybe ask some questions. Why, why hasn't anybody followed up on my interest? What is it I need to do to be better prepared to serve on the district level? And that may be the key question. And very often, we forget people tell us something and oh yeah, and then we forget about it. But tell more people and then find out if there is res resistance for a reason and address that reason. And lots of times we don't like to say to somebody, well, it's nice that you're enthusiastic about this, but I don't think you even know how to get on to zanta.org, much less what our current projects are. And yet that may be the case, and that may be what we need to say. Okay. Please. wasn't going to speak that long, but uh, we had that exact issue come up. And I, being president at the time, was unaware that this person really wanted to move up to the district level. But she went to um, NAIDM and asked people gathered there and found out that, oh, talk to my club president. Oh, I didn't do that. She seems to know a lot already. So she had left the local club out of her link okay. and desires. Thank you, Kay. Exactly. Tell a lot of people. Because the person you do tell may not be able to do anything about it or may forget. And I know about forgetting. So we're at that point now at step four where we look at designing the learning experience. We have to identify, well, what resources, what materials do I need? What do I need to pre prepare and provide for others? What am I going to use? So what kind of activities will help people be able to learn and apply this information? <clears throat> How do I want to structure it? about how much time will it take? So to go back to my example with the international board, um, well, I'll deal with that in a minute. Think about the resources that we have on santa.org. Are you gonna be using the Zanta manuals? Do you need to download them and make copies of the pages? Do you need to have people do that ahead of time? Which manuals are you going to refer to? Are you sure you have the latest version? <clears throat> then you look at, are there particular e-learning sessions that would really fit in this learning session? They're relatively short, 10 to 15 minutes. You can do it in a little bit at a time, or you can show all of it, get 
conversation going, discussion, and how would you do it? Because that's really the key, helping people make it their own. <clears throat> I think if you look at the core competencies, they are not the be all and end all, but they are designed to help you help others. So what is it you need to be able to do as a Zanta member? Well, you need to know our mission. You need to know our causes and what we support. You need to know why we do these things. If you're on the board, what is it you need to know? Where will you find that information? The core competencies are designed to be a roadmap for whoever you are helping to prepare for future leadership. Here's where, where you can find this. Here's what you want the person to do, how to apply it, and what you are expecting because of that. So it makes it simpler for you. Do you need to tap into what our causes are? Especially if you're dealing with some motivational issues, maybe there's a cause that Zanta supports, or maybe your, your local area has a Zanta service project that addresses what is important to the, pers the persons or the people you're working with. We have all that, let's use it. <clears throat> How do you learn best? What helps you? What kind of activities do you ha enjoy having in a learning situation? How do you feel about role-playing? I know I've had people say, oh my God, oh, I hope we're not gonna have to role play. Or, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I hope I don't have to stand up and say anything. Don't ask me what I think, that's private. Okay. <laughs> As adults, sorry, we, ha we have to be actively engaged in the process. So how do we do that? So if you look at some of the possibilities, role play is a real safe way to help people try out some skills where you can't fail. It's all about learning and doing. And you can have some fun with it. You can try different behaviors. <clears throat> Brainstorming is wonderful because everybody generates ideas, but it takes skill because all too often when we brainstorm after the second idea, somebody wants to troubleshoot it. No, no, no analysis, no discussion until we have at least 50 ideas down. You think I kid. Mm -mm. Then you can switch to another part of your brain and that's what's so key. Now you're analyzing the ideas. Now it's good. Now you see what combines, what can be tweaked a little, but it's that initial creative, brain dump that is so important. Are people going to build something or make something? I had lots of fun for a number of years working with UAW employees on low ropes experiences. And it was amazing how they worked together as a team to solve a a puzzle like how to get across Alligator River 
using the few stepping stones and how that translated to how they worked together. And they were outdoors and they had a good time. So you know, what is it that will work? Will you have demonstrations? Who will be doing the demonstration? What do you want people to take away from that? Because sometimes I don't know how something works unless I see somebody do it. Best, best way to teach people how to do anything on the computer is to do it with them, you know, learn and do. <clears throat> Many times in conflict management, problem solving and training, it's simply using a process to learn step by step, this is how I do it. This is basically what you're doing, following a process to end up with a product that you can use. So working with the international board, I know that at that level, we're all very smart and we know pretty much. I also realize that it's real easy not to be aware of what other people are seeing. So the training process involved sharing the different bylaw amendments that board members were either speaking for or against giving them the opportunity to stand up and, and do their for or against speech, and then pan the, the other board members from time to time. So we videotaped that and we played it back. Oh my God. I didn't realize I was reading my notes. Oh. <laughs> You could really catch me chatting with my neighbor. I care about this amendment, but I'm not mad about it. Okay. Okay, what is it you see that other people will see? What is it that you need to adjust in terms of nonverbal behavior? That board was magnificent. <laughs> they were so conscious, and this is not easy to do through a, that long convention. They were very conscious of how they look to the audience because they're going to be on camera. They may not know it, and it captures every little twitch. And they were very conscious of that. And I don't know if you ever heard feedback. I, I remember one infamous convention where people complain bitterly about things the incoming president did, roll our eyes and things like that. So totally unconscious behavior. But when we know about things, we can avoid them. So your turn. <clears throat> Based on your scenario, I'd like you to develop the activities that you will incorporate in the learning so that people have an opportunity to apply and experience what it is you're looking for them to do as a result. Think about how you would structure that and about how much time it would take. So back to the worksheet. And remember, neatness doesn't count. And if you spell creatively, more power to you. We think we'll do 15 minutes. But if you need more time, we'll give you more time. So have fun.
little, it's mostly I just stiffen. Oh. Hmm. Well, we'll find out. Huh? Hey, Kathy Scanlon. You're on mute, hon. I am. How's it going this morning? It's going okay. It's going okay. Were you not in a group? No. Oh, okay. You popped in later then. Did yes, you? I did. I did. Okay. Unfortunately, I totally uh, was... Uh, distracted by something my husband was doing so <laughs> okay okay no worries I just didn't want you to be out in the cold if you wanted to be somewhere that's all because I could could have got you into a group but that's okay all righty I'm, I'm fine um I'm interested this is interesting actually it really is and just so you know all the presentations will be posted on the Cincinnati Natum website following the the meeting Oh, good. Okay. Like next, like next week or whatever, they'll all be there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I okay. noticed that they asked, you know, they asked you if you, when you were coming in, if you mind being recorded. And I, I yeah. said, okay, that was no problem. Yeah. So are you real busy doing a lot of stuff? Um, this weekend's a little busy, but after that, um, my son gets married next weekend. So it's oh, crazy. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Have, you, have you got a pretty dress? Uh, I actually got a dress the first day that we were able to go shopping in person. So yes, I have a dress. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. I'm not I remember shopping for my son. I have one son that's unmarried and uh, I don't know whether he'll marry, marry at all, but he, um, but I remember shopping for the other two and it was, it was a lot of fun actually. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. It was a great time. So yeah, and I'm sure that, and I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun at the, at the, um, wedding and reception because we ha we had so much fun it's such oh, a good well, time such we, good we time. are we're not open we're yet so we oh, can no. Have, no we can have um we're, we're having uh 50 to the backyard for the wedding mm -hmm. and then we're only having family dinner uh in a in a big open tent after so there'll only be 25 of us oh oh i'm but sorry he, yeah he's it, it's because we're still in lockdown right Oh my goodness. You know, it, you know, the other night when we did that beverages um, thing and yeah. um, I didn't, you know, I, I talked, uh, I said, I have to get a hold of Lori about, you know, the Santa says no. And they said, oh, she's real busy, but they didn't say why you were real busy between, they mentioned that you were doing this, but they didn't mention about the wedding. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but nobody well, mentioned, that, nobody that, mentioned, huh? I'm sorry. That night, I was with my daughter-in-law to be for her dress fitting because her mother bailed on her. Oh and no! So, yeah, so I went and um, and had to. Uh, so so we were listening on the on a, on my phone on the way back. Oh. I'm getting, so I got. Okay. To, but, but that's why I I was there just listening. Oh, um, I, see. I was driving. So um, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I my husband my husband doesn't think I should even um, listen and resp um, when I'm on, when I'm driving. So, yeah, <sighs> well, she, she had control of the phone and that, so that was good. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I have, uh, um, so anyway, I, I will be calling you in a couple weeks about, um, um, Dante says no, cause I wanted to talk to you about the, you know, the social media aspect and all that stuff. So, Okay, well, um, I did it last last um, last I know. year. For, yeah, so I we have some templates and stuff, but um, I'm happy to pass that on to anyone on your committee who wants to take that on, and we'll just get it done ahead of time and get them posted so that they come up every every day. So, 
Well, we we'll yeah, we're having a meeting in August. And so I'll ask who wants to do that. And um, because I'm, I'm still trying to, my daughter-in-law, you know, after we spoke, uh, my daughter-in-law put me on um, Instagram, but I'm having a devil of a time figuring out what's going on, to be honest okay. with you. But the, but the only thing is, the, the only thing you have to do is you let me know what you want up. Like you guys create the content and I'll post it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to invite me to one of your meetings to talk about the, the expectations of the content, mm -hmm. I'm happy to, I'm happy to do that to make it easy for them. And I can womp you a whole whack of templates and then you can pick and choose and develop whatever you want. Okay. That sounds real good. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Okay. Well, I got to go I, and I, troubleshoot I, somewhere else. Okay. All right. Cause I, um, I, um, I, I'm not getting uh, the only ones that really are doing a super job are um, no, I can't say that that's not fair. So uh, uh, I'm not doing a super job because I don't feel like I'm um, uh, cognizant of what has has to really be done as far as I'm not very good on the computer and I've been having so much trouble with my computer that that it's it's been kind of agonizing the only ones that have really saved me are, is julie julie's really been very helpful um uh the event posting i didn't realize that they were going to go to one one time um a month so now we're going to be like um off in uh for the event posting they're only going to do once in july once in august and for some reason, I should have, I think I should have known that, but I didn't know it. So, okay. Um, okay. So um, any events that you want posted on Facebook or Instagram, I'm doing all the way through. The only thing that's going to once a month is the constant contact let mail out letter. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So if you have anything you want posted on the Facebook or the Instagram, just shoot it to me. Okay. All right. Okay. All righty. Um, are you going to be responsible for posting about not? Natum, I don't know how to say that. Um, Natum or Natum, the North American Inner District. Yeah, are you going to post anything for for um, for our our district at all on on Facebook or Instagram? That we're in Natum right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can do that. I'll do something great. Okay, I know you will. You always are great. There's no two ways about that. <laughs> all the presentations and everything that are being done here at Natum will all the postings for their um, um, the presentations will all be posted on the Natum website. Okay. If I could do something fabulous, I'll I'll do a posting on our Facebook page that um, there's a record number of us attending virtually and from District Four. We have the highest um, participation right now. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll put something on Facebook. Oh, good. Do you, what is what is the overall attendance as far as people in person? Do we do we have any in, idea? In person was um 191, I believe. I just got a new one today and I haven't opened it. Oh, but 100, okay. 191 um, in person, and um, we have 90, 97 virtual. Ah, which is great. Yeah, it is. I think I think that uh, I don't know if you knew Sally Bean called me last week. No. Well, they wanted me to to, um, to lead a discussion, and I said I couldn't because I had eye surgery. Oh. <laughs> I really could. Um, and I um, I'm just now I'm still having blurry vision. But the doctor says mm -hmm. it should get better. So <sighs> that's another reason I was glad that i have the option of coming to this um online so because mm -hmm. I, I i just started driving um earlier this week and i went to the my doctor appointment by myself because my husband kept saying are you sure you don't need a ride i said no no i can make it but uh it's been very disconcerting having eye surgery is is not a pleasant thing no oh i'm sorry to hear that yeah well, um, it's it it was uh, it was the lids, but and I never dreamt that they were. I I have to put this medicine in that, that makes my okay. I work. have to go. They need me in a room. All right, I'll talk to you later. Okay. okay. Bye bye.
would someone with a yellow scenario please tell us what you came up with remind us of what your scenario is and then take us through your training design Yay for volunteers is right. Good morning. I'm Erica Steiner. I'm from the Sanibel Captiva Club. And we were assigned scenario three, which is very timely because it talks about um, people who are not tech savvy and having to get into the technology world. Um, our, our person is the PR Com um, Communications Committee Chair. Okay. And she has a group of people that are, and I'm putting this in air quotes, refusing to, to get onto a, a, a digital meeting. So um, because we're in step four, I won't go back through all the other um, areas that we talked about, but in terms of resources, we realized that YouTube is one of the best sources of information. So we decided that that would be a homework assignment for training people and um, followed up by a, a personal type training where we would set a time because we don't want it to be endless. But at the beginning of the meeting offer that for anybody who's not feeling comfortable with it, we will arrange for one-on-one -on -one training. Cool. Um, and um, we also thought that another tool that we would use is a train the trainers type because there are always some people who are very techno technologically adept and and so we could kind of you know get a spider web of people training i, I love the spider web yes. <laughs> um some of the other tools we would use are screenshots that people could keep so that that they could refresh their minds um and um we, we also, our, our instruction was that we needed to both train our committee members and then the club at large. So we were thinking about how to, how to set that up so that um, we weren't boring people to death, but giving them enough time so that they could absorb it. Um, did I miss anything important? Excellent. Thank you. How many of you had that scenario this year? Yeah. Sometimes Jackie, we learn things because we have to. <laughs> can I can I ask a question of this group that did this and all the yellows that were in the room? This is Tammy Hagen. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. And we have these people in our club, as we all do. But we've been confronted by the people who are so adamant there, and they've been a longtime member. They're like, if you say I have to do this, I'm leaving the club. So how do you motivate the resistant member who doesn't even get on the web, doesn't even use the computer to, to get over that hump of being comfortable to even sign into YouTube? So. Hi everyone, Charlene Thomas, District 11, uh, coming from Montgomery, Alabama. We had the issue and not only just with District 11, but with my church, with my garden club, with family, where we went on Zoom, the issue was some people may not have adequate internet. Some people may have malware problems. Computers may be old fashioned to where, or older versions where they don't have a video. And therefore people are feeling incompetent. And so I would rather say then that something is not right because I'm not up to par to do that. And one of the biggies we had, I shared with them with my church of getting people in Lowndes County, Alabama and getting people to use Zoom with our church members was because a lot of the electronic devices they had were just for calling. It was not sure. internet accessible. So therefore they could not download the Zoom app, which was why the school system had buses set up to come in neighborhoods with internet capabilities for a specific time. So that was why wow. we were discussing 
maybe doing the one-on-one -on -one so that a person would not be embarrassed to say oh, yeah. what they don't have. We came up, we realized they had a member who had malware problems. Sure. And one thing was stated, if you're downloading these apps, you really need protection with your internet. So now we've really stepped up your computer that you have, things to be able to do electronic. And so some people may know I don't have this and hearing you say what they need, that's more money. And so that could be the big issue, money, to be able to be technically savvy. Okay, yes. And it may be a case of, as Lieutenant Governor just said to me, <laughs> maybe have them to come over to your house if sure. you all have been covid -ly, you know, meeting and able, you know, safe that way to get with someone. But it's a financial issue when you get to talking about upgrading a person's computer capability. And it was something I didn't get until working with it and realizing that, you know, having someone to have more internet capability to keep your screen from freezing. Exactly. What you're telling that person, pull out some more money. So that really could be the issue. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anybody who has a blue scenario? <laughs> Hi, uh, Christy Matthews from the Zonta Club of Newport Harbor. And as a reminder, we are the district treasurer and we're helping Sophia. And so we talked about resources. Obviously, typically the district has a treasurer's manual. Mm -hmm. We also talked about the e-learning. And then we thought about brainstorming because changing treasurers is a great time to encourage clubs to move beyond maybe what they have been doing and consider some alternative formats like Venmo or Square. So these are great times to not come in and say, this is how you have to do it, but say, what are we doing now? And maybe what's out there that we could consider mixing things up or introducing new things to our club. Um, for designing the learning, we will use checklists because treasurers are very important for checklists. Mm -hmm. And we would also do some scenario run throughs. So let's say, let's talk about member renewal. How will you manage that? Let's talk about paying dues to the district. How will we do that? And we had a great point, which is typically treasurers are very detail oriented and question driven. So being prepared for that type of information, making sure that we can address those questions and we think about the personality style that typically draws people into the different rules and being able to address those, so. Fantastic, thank you so much. I'd like to ask my good friend in Texas, Candy Ward, if she could give us an update on her scenario. Candy, are you there? Hi, Jackie, this is Lori. Unfortunately, oh. Candy wasn't joining us today. Oh, okay. Um, well, I missed her. So, Lori? Perhaps, perhaps you would like to call on Sheena Poole. Hi, Sheena. Share your, your design with us. Well, uh, we were a group of ladies who got together and all of us had a different scenario when we got together. So we adopted the treasurer one, which you just spoke about, um, or the previous uh, lady just spoke of. Um, but we were looking to possibly engage a assistant treasurer in a discussion with the, the district, um, the district treasurer, so that she would have a support person, uh, somebody to be in ears and eyes as well when all of this information is coming to her. Also using the Zont International website and, and really explaining where all the resources are because there's mm -hmm. a huge amount of resources there that can help the treasurer. And we felt that you know going there often and, and looking at that and encouraging that behavior. Uh, also using e-learning, uh, we were really uh, looking to do training sessions, whether one-on-one -on -one with, with Sophia in this case, or throughout the year doing um, them with the 
other club uh, treasurers in the district to really create a sense of uh, community for them so they can then learn from each other should they need to. Okay, that's wonderful. Thank you, Sheena. Janice, how about your group? What did you come up with? Janice Beyer? Hi, Jackie. Unfortunately, Janice was not able to join us today. Okay. <laughs> um, perhaps you would like to reach out to uh, another team leader who stepped to the mark in the absence of a team lead. Okay. And who is that? Uh, do I have a volunteer? I volunteer. Wonderful, oh. thank you. <laughs> Yay, and notice enthusiastically. Yes, <laughs> so my name is CJ. I'm from uh, the Santa Club of Ottawa. Um, our scenario is scenario one in which we have a new club president who was new to Zonta uh, about five years in Zonta before becoming president and didn't really feel uh, uh, confident in her knowledge of the policies and procedures. So our position was as an area director. So um, we, we recognize, we well, at this point, we don't know what their needs are for training. Um, we don't know what their career background is, for example, um, and recognizing it would be different if they are a young professional without a, a, you know, a lengthy um, career to, to kind of lean back on that experience. Uh, we know that they'd be feeling, um, they could be feeling anxious about the training, but also maybe relieved um, for uh, finally getting the support that they may have wanted for a while, um, but also overwhelmed because it's a lot of information. So our purpose would be to, um, sorry, please stop me if I'm providing too much, if I went back too far in the scenario, but um, we'd be uh, informing them of the resources um, that are available to them, motivating them to do self-learning and reassuring them um, through the use of, you know, emotional intelligence uh, that, you know, the feelings of anxiety and overwhelm um, are normal and that um, there are supports there for them, but also convincing them to build their own support system within uh, their club, as well as um, um, leaning on other, the other presidents that are, um, also new and, and experiencing the same things and who may also have different skills based on their careers. We'd use the resources um, that were listed as well as uh, those onto manuals, e-learning sessions, core competencies, club calendar, um, and we'd provide a walkthrough of how to navigate to those uh, resources for those visual learners. And also the activities uh, would be, you know, role-playing um, to, um, practice uh, the, the core competencies such as delegation, which we know is so very important, um, and posing different scenarios um, to the presidents um, so they get that firsthand experience. And we decided checklists are very helpful, um, also as an ob objective measure of success. Um, and I added um, as well reflection exercises uh, to help reinforce the culture that we want as Zonchins. Great, thank you so much. Very thorough, very clear. So we're on the home stretch. You have really done the bulk of the development and now it's the final touches. So Ivana is going to help you ice the cake. If you'd ever seen me ice a cake, you'd know I'm not going to do that. Okay, you've just developed this fabulous plan. You've sensed a need, you've developed it. It could be tempting to just put it on the shelf and say, well, if anybody wants to know, I've got it. I just want to give you a hint. You do that, Goodmanson will chase you down and hurt you. 
we have a plan. It's time to put it in play. Uh, we need to see what good can come from that. And implementation is the key. Just do it. I learned something a long time ago as a young bride that should tell you how very much of a long time ago it was. <laughs> Don't ever try a new recipe on dinner guests. Okay, yeah, you, 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 you there with me? Okay, yeah, Patty, I see you. <laughs> the first time we do this wonderful training that we've developed needs to be a test run. Something like you do, you fix your recipe for your family and say, what do you think? Can I serve it Thursday night or not? All right, test run. Whether you want to call it a shakedown cruise, whatever you want to do, you need to gather some people of like mind, test your training program with them. Why do you want to do that? Well, first of all, you need to test your content. Is it clear? Does it flow smoothly? Does it resonate with your audience? Then you need to check your timing. We've been, you've been seeing us do that today on the fly as we're doing this. In your scenario you've created, you may have allowed 15 minutes for an exercise. That may not be enough. It may be too much time, but you won't know until you test it. You need interaction with your, with your training scenario that you've completed. Do you have enough built in? Does it, it requires hands-on interaction and you need to know that you've done that. I teach in a university setting and it's my wonderful privilege to stand at the podium and impart knowledge to those 18 to 22 year olds. Yeah, right. But anyway, that's my job. But this kind of training, what the Jackies and I have been doing is not to impart knowledge. Jackie McCarroll has already talked about that. We're trying to get people to act on the knowledge they have in order to change behaviors. And the in-depth preparation that we've done will help you get that done today. So our activity, and I have an interesting piece there, but we can't, but I, this is so sensitive, I dare not mess with it. So read through that. Your, your activity now for step five, if preparation equals success, then you need to do a few more things. How are you gonna implement your training? Where is it gonna happen? How will it, when will it happen? Where will it happen? How long will it be? What do you need? Do you need a laptop, flip chart, handouts? What, what is it? Think through these details. What will you use as you present this? Will you need PowerPoint, demonstration, role plays? That's your next assignment. So there we go. You have 15 minutes to figure that out. We'll get back to you in just a second. God, so sorry. Didn't test my time. It's now been reduced to 10 minutes, sorry.
back. The voice. Uh, speaking of voices, we have a very quiet and extraordinary hero amongst us. Would you give a hand to Russell back there, who's helping? <laughs> Having the right support when engaged in training and, and helping people learn is so very critical and we witnessed it here in so many different ways. We're going to combine your feedback on step five and six, given the realities of time. So I know you're excited. Hang on to the edge of your seat. Uh, let's talk more closely around. Okay, we're not done yet. Step six says we need to pause and somehow assess, evaluate how this training venture actually went. We have lessons learned. So who in the group besides me has ever uh, provided training or presented information and the next day you're replaying how you wish it had been. Okay, okay. Right. Uh, let's build on our confidence and competence by being sure to quickly uh, invite feedback, invite evaluation. How did it go? Through observation. In Jackie's example with the ZI board, she and all of them could witness the behavior changes, providing feedback around that. Sometimes what's involved is a personal response. Susie Q, I especially appreciated how you reminded us how very important it is to actually get online and access and learn from the core competencies. Something specific, a personal response. There are other times where being more anonymous is your chosen approach. For instance, at the end of this workshop, uh, you'll receive an electronic survey. There are all kinds of ways to gather feedback uh, it's critically important to take advantage of that. We can also learn to celebrate our successes. But sometimes the really effective approaches, uh, our successes go unnoticed because it works so well. Uh, and to be able to articulate, here's what went well, here's what we learned from it, uh, to be sure that the investment uh, and the value of the training is optimal. We'd like you to think about your scenario, and this is grand finale here. I think Yvonne talked about icing the cake. Okay, right now we're slicing the cake, all right? Okay. <laughs> and taking a closer look at, we're going to get to uh, really just talk about five minutes at your table to address Step number six, okay? Uh, why are you evaluating? And mo most importantly, what are some choices in terms of how you will evaluate or assess this extraordinary training that you've planned? So I'm gonna change the timing here to five minutes and then we'll combine. We'd love to hear from at least a couple of the scenarios in terms of the what, where, when, and how as and then from someone else how you evaluate what questions you have okay you'll love it i'm the most excited <laughs>
Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Isabel, are you there? All right, so please, um, regarding step five, let's offer this up to a volunteer. Would someone please step up to the mic enthusiastically and share us, what did you come up with for step five? Look how excited she is. <laughs> uh, Cheryl Trudeau, Zonda Club of Kankakee, uh, District 6 Lieutenant Governor. Um, so our scenario was the Lieutenant Governor was the role and they, she had a club that um, had five other 40 members not renew. So they were trying to figure out a way to address those things. So we were going to be doing the SWOT analysis and the way we would, how we would implement that was several different options uh, through fall conference um, where we would have the club boards and the presidents attend a, a session uh, through the area workshops with the leaders of the clubs that come to the workshops or perhaps a standalone virtual uh, session to, uh, to uh, reach those individuals as well. So where it would happen would be across the district at all these different scenarios. When it would happen would be at these different scenarios, maybe a three hour, we also discussed perhaps a series of sessions to address this as well. Um, we would need laptops, flip charts with everything that goes along with flip charts. We also talked about perhaps an electronic flip chart or a whiteboard, a smart board to capture that. So you electronically have the information that everybody uh, suggested. And as far as a Lieutenant Governor, we would use a PowerPoint. We would also virtually have breakout rooms to uh, um, gather the information and as far as um, facilitating these sessions. So, Thank so we you did. so well articulated. We appreciate that. We have one more opportunity for our uh, virtual Zanta sisters to speak to us just very briefly. How would you evaluate this training program you work so hard to develop? Could we have a volunteer from anyone out there virtually? Perhaps we could hear from Holly Anderson's group. Thank you. Hi, it's Holly. Um, actually, CJ Blake is our um, has been taking our notes, but I'll try to remember um, what we said just recently in our oh so short session. <laughs> Um, the, uh, we, d we agreed that there should be a pre and post training survey run for the participants. And one of the, um, attendees recommended that a meeting evaluator be appointed at the start of the meeting who would give the presenter one-on-one -on -one feedback of the session after the meeting. It was also recommended that we go back to the trainees three to four weeks after the session to ask them for feedback and ask them if they've been able to implement what they learned in the training. And I think that's it. If other people in a, the session want to chime in, that's all for me. Thank you so much. Uh, wonderful ideas in that oh so short feedback session. Uh, 
to remind you, you know, we're going to be collecting what you put together at your various table teams and sharing the scenarios and ultimately the training plan. The scenarios will be on the NEIDM website for future reference and the other information for you as well. Thanks. Next. No, no, just where's the, oh. <laughs> okay. I have to ask you, was it helpful at all? Did you enjoy yourself? Woo. It's always fabulous to work with Sanchez. I have to say you're the best group in the world. You are, give yourself a hand. Yes. If you would send me your completed worksheet by July 20th, and I have my email up on the screen, I will collate all the scenario, all of the worksheets and email them to you. Now, how will I know who to email them to? By the signature on the sign-in sheets. So if you didn't sign in when you came in, please do that. So I know for sure that I'll be sending you the uh, compilation of all the great work that was done this morning. So thank you so much. Jackie, we have one question on our chat. Yes. Regarding collection. Could you please use the microphone? Are the sheets there? So they're not there. So plan B, we will make them available so that if you didn't get a chance to sign in, you can. Jackie, do you want one per table? Is it just? Yes, that would be great. Okay. So we'll, we'll get the, the spokesperson of our table to send it on the behalf of our whole table. That would be wonderful. That would be perfect. And I would like also to receive the copies from the uh, virtual groups so that we have a wonderful set of training designs geared to outcomes that you can use, you can adapt them, you can apply them, you can share them. And we'll all be much rich, richer for that. Lonnie. Thank you. Um, Lonnie Oaks from Charlevoix, Michigan. I, we talked about updating computers and computer issues. Um, I know our local high school each spring retires a number of the student iPads and they make them available. I think they're $50. Um, so I would suggest that they don't advertise it really. Um, but call your local schools and see if they also retire them, erase all the school information off of sure. and you can get a updated one very economically. Thank you. Thank you, Lani. Where there's a will, there's a way, isn't that true? And sometimes if there isn't a will, having a friend do it with you makes all the difference in the world because it's the bottom line decision for people is, do I want to continue to communicate with Zonta members? And if it's virtual, how can I do that without major expense? And if I don't want to, I don't want to. So that doesn't mean we don't still love them. 
So my friends, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for all your work. And I'm eager to share it with you. Thank you. District meeting. We are so glad to have you all here today.